So, okay. Hello, it's me again. Um, had a lazy day today. Um, I think I'm going to do another reaction video. Everyone's in there, and so and my boyfriend's asleep, so, you know, I just want to go ahead and do this. It's called Birthday at Freddy's, and um, <clears throat> it's narrated by Chilling Tales. Um, for Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. Um, oh, the the one narrating is Jonathan Jones. I don't know who that is. So, um, let's watch it, shall or you listen? Well, we're both listening. So, here we go. I skipped all the intro crap. So, or at least I think I did. But let's do this. are always finding new ways to entertain or enrich their kids. In fact, the earliest years are the most important in a child's life when it comes to developing their young mind. This was no different for me. My mom would always take me to the arcades, complete with all sorts of top-of-the-line games, or the parks with the jungle gyms that were always scolding hot for being in the sun all day. There weren't too many options to choose from, but for what they were, those were what made up my fondest childhood memories. As a treat for my seventh birthday, my mom took me to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. It was supposed to be a fun little place, from what I can remember. A magical place for kids and grown-ups alike. Where fantasy and fun come to life, or, or something like that. It, it looked really promising, to be honest with you, and... I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited about going there. The pizza was what you'd expect, lazily put together, and didn't quite taste right. But you didn't go for the food. You went to see Freddy Fazbear and his gang of colorful friends, Bonnie the Bunny and Chica the Chick. There was Foxy, too. He lived in the Pirate Cove. Thinking back on it now, the animatronics were pretty good for the time. They had full body movement when singing on stage, and even Foxy moved around quite a bit on his little pirate ship. In fact, I remember that after a few songs, Freddy and friends would come off the stage and walk around, interacting with the kids. They would walk up to the kids and say things like, How's the pizza? Good, I bet. Or, or, are you having fun? I know I am. I remember that Foxy always said, It's me. I'm gonna get you. It was cute. To keep the kids entertained, <laughs> there would be little games they'd play, like Follow the Freddy, which was just Follow the Leader. Or, or Foxy's Treasure Hunt, where kids would be given small trinkets and, and Foxy would chase after them like a game of tag. I remember I had finished my slice of pizza and asked if I could play the Treasure Hunt game with Foxy. My mom said it was okay, so I got up. And one of the workers gave me a tiny, palm-sized treasure chest. I was actually really excited. Foxy was my favorite. Me and about six favorite. other kids were given small treasures, and that's when Foxy jumped off the pirate cove. He yelled, It's me! I'm gonna get ya! And that's when we all scrambled. It was great fun. I looked over my shoulder and saw Foxy chasing around the other kids, and at one point, he even almost got me. Boy, Foxy was fast. I didn't quite know why at the time. But while I was in the middle of playing the treasure hunt game, my mom lifted me up abruptly and carried me swiftly toward the exit. She said things like, We've got to go right now. And we never should have come here. I'd never heard such urgency in her voice before. I thought that maybe it was because some kids started crying when Foxy caught them. They had screamed really loud and started sobbing. I remember that a bunch of parents rushed over. There was all sorts of commotion and noise, but I was too busy having fun to notice that anything was wrong. But now that I think of it, I do remember that as my mom carried me through the exit, 
I saw Foxy standing above the body of the kid he had caught. He was staring right at me, with crimson liquid dripping from his shirt. It's me! I'm gonna get ya! Oh, that was creepy. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> it was well narrated and it was a pretty nice story. Um yeah, I'm working on a couple stories myself too, but they're taking a while because I have bad, not a bad, I'm not a good writer. So, yeah. They're like creepy pastas. So, yeah, I kind of suck at it, but that's why it's, to me, it takes, it takes months for, to make my stories good. But other than that, um, that was pretty good. So I look like crap. I was, like I said, I had a lazy day, and yeah, my hair is all. I had hairspray in it from yesterday. So I went to this Christmas play, which at the end it scared me. <laughs> it was scary. Like other Christmas play. I know this is off topic, but um, other Christmas plays I've been to, I was like, uh. But, um, the one I went to last night, <laughs> near the end, I literally cried. It was, it was creepy, like, I can't describe it. Um, I don't know if I've never seen this in a Christmas play, but, um, the, it was when people were going to heaven and they were, walking up the aisle and like you know they were some people were like oh heaven heaven and um got on their knees and bowed and god was like come up and receive your award for the ones that made it and they got up and got robe got this got white put a white robe on and a and a crown and they stood there with the others the ones that didn't make it, the angel was like standing there in front and he was like, he pointed the other way and the people were like, what? And he was, God was like, I never knew you, depart from me. And these people, white, white, black robes, like grabbed them and like took them, like pulled them away and pushed them back on this curtain that represented hell. <laughs> and you can hear like, they're like screaming really loud and I was like and um you can hear like did the you can hear like faint screaming and pain in the background and I was like it scared me like I literally I literally cried it was that bad <laughs> that the play was amazing though like I liked it they put a lot of effort it was at my aunt's church they put a lot of effort in it and I loved it Maybe had second thoughts about my life, and I was like, "Yeah, I should. I should change my life around a little bit." I mean, to me, I still like my music and the music I listen to, and I'll still like the things I usually like, but I won't live the way they do. I'm just that's how that's the best I can explain it. Live how they live. I'll still be fans of them, enjoy their music and stuff, and I'll still enjoy creepypastas, but you know, I don't think I'll turn to, I don't think I'll turn to a psychopath or something like that. 
but yeah, that changed me a lot. And I was like, and Mama goes, yeah, that, that stuff's scary. <laughs> but anyways, I gotta go. Sorry that went off topic. Um, I just had to share that. I couldn't wait. I just had to, after the um, reaction, I had to share that. But I'll see you guys later. Hope you guys have a great nighttime, daytime, whatever. Whatever it is there. And bye. See you guys later.